because uh, it will matter. Pag narrow QRS complex, it means to say the QRS is less than 0.12 or 120 milliseconds. And visually, it will be narrow. Pag sinabi nating 0.12, that's uh, three small squares. Pag wide complex QRS, it's more than 0.12 or 120 milliseconds. That's uh, more than three small squares. So visually, kailangan mo practice yung mata nyo. This is a narrow complex tachycardia in a wide complex tachycardia. So, I memorize nyo ito. Uh, we divide it into a narrow complex QRS and a wide complex QRS. I will start with the wide complex QRS because there are only two differential diagnoses. But on clinical practice, if it's a wide complex tachycardia, we manage as ventricular tachycardia, not SVT with aberrancy. And then, for example, you manage as ventricular tachycardia, tapos nang na manage mo ng patient, pinakita mo sa cardio, it was eventually uh, read as SVT with aberrancy. It doesn't matter because the management will be the same. So you don't need to worry about SVT with aberrancy. Pag white complex tachycardia, your answer will be automatically ventricular tachycardia. Just to uh, give you a hint, what is SVT with aberrancy? We talk about, um, we will talk about SVT today, but what if hindi pa siya normal, ang heart rate niya is 60 to, 8, 60 to 80 beats per minute at rest, pero meron na siyang right bundle branch block, so it's a white complex QRS at rest. And then nagkaroon siya ng SVT, bumilis yung heart rate niya, about 180 beats per minute. Pero it will appear as SVT with a white complex QRS kasi meron na siyang right bundle branch block from the start. So magkakaroon siya ng white complex uh, QRS na tachycardia. And yun yung SVT with a variance. Ibig sabihin, at rest or hindi pa siya nagkakaroon ng tachycardia. Meron na siyang white complex QRS, either a left bundle branch block, a right bundle branch block. So, hindi kasama yung RBBB, LBBB sa topic natin. Kaya, if you have a wide complex QRS, tachycardia, ang sagot nyo is automatically ventricular tachycardia. We will talk about ventricular, ventricular tachycardia later. So, pag narrow QRS co complex, uh, we divide it into either two. Alam niyo na yung either regular or irregular rhythm, ibig sabihin yung R to R interval is pag regular siya, same, same. Pag irregular naman, magkaiba-iba yung distance. Minsan it's wide, minsan, minsan it's a little bit narrow. Okay? So pag regular, you have three differential diagnoses. It can be sinus tachycardia, it can be paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, or atrial flutter. Pag irregular rhythm naman, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi pare-parehas yung R to R interval, but it's narrow complex QRS. You have two differential diagnoses, multifocal atrial tachycardia or atrial fibrillation. So ulitin lang natin because iisa-isahin natin to and you need to know the algorithm. So if it's a tachycardia algorithm, meaning mabilis yung heart rate more than 100 beats per minute, you have to look at the QRS if it's either wide or narrow. If it's wide, complex QRS, meaning more than uh, 120 milliseconds or more than three small squares, automatic yung diagnosis mo is ventricular tachycardia. Okay? At this point in time, na-intern kayo. Kahit maging doktor na kayo, um, ventricular tachycardia pa rin ang sagot nyo, not SVT with aberrancy. But cardiologist ka, pwedeng mag-try ka mag-differentiate ng dalawa at emergency room. Pero um, suffice to say, as a physician, if you have a white complex QRS tachycar uh, tachycardia, yes, you diagnose as ventricular tachycardia and therefore your management will be about ventricular tachycardia. And actually, it also doesn't matter either SVT with aberrancy or VTAC because the management will still be the same. Okay? Now, narrow QRS com complex, you have to differentiate, you have to look at the R to R interval if it's either regular or irregular. Kasi pag regular yung line, tatlo yung differential diagnosis mo, and then pag irregular, dalawang differential diagnosis mo. Okay? Let's start. So let's start with the with a narrow complex tachycardia. And the most common here is not SVT, but 
uh, sinus tachycardia. When we say sinus tachycardia, there is PQRST and it's regularly occurring. Yung R to R interval is the same. It just so happened uh, the heart rate is more than 100 beats per minute. So how to count 400 beats? Kung ilang beats to the about 300, 100. 300, 150, 100. So the heart rate here is like 100 to 150. So that's tachycardia. And if you look at lead two, you have a P wave, a QRS, and a T wave. So in all lead, in all beat, there is always a PQRST. It's regularly occurring. Uh, the QRS complex is narrow and the heart rate is more than 100 beats per minute, that is sinus tachycardia. Para lang siyang normal sinus rhythm na pinabilis, yun yung sinus tachycardia. So the, this is another example of sinus tachycardia. If you look at it, it's um, narrow complex QRS, and then there is PQRST in every beat, PQRST in every beat, and it's regularly occurring. And uh, tachycardic to kasi, let's say this is 300, uh, 150, so around 150 beats per minute yung heart rate niya. Kung ayaw nyo, hindi nyo memorize yung 300, 150, 175, 60, 50, 40, 20, 30, uh, 30 20. Then mag-compute na lang kayo. You just count the small squares, 1, 2, 3. 10, maybe 10 to 11. A small number, uh, the 1,500 di divided by small squares from R to R interval. That's the heart rate of a patient. So, kung wala kayong calculator, kailangan marunong kayo mag visual estimate ng heart rate. So, this is sinus tachycardia because there is a PQRST in every beat. It's regularly occurring, meaning the R to R interval is the same, and the QRS complex is narrow. Okay, sinus tachycardia. So the management of sinus tachycardia is observe or you identify the cause and then you treat the cause. You have to check for hemodynamics. Hindi nyo pa, hindi nyo kailangang alamin yung management nito. I will not ask you an exam. I just want to show you what we do in sinus tachycardia. It's uh, been, it can be a benign rhythm. For example, nag fever, tataas yung heart rate or there is an increase in sympathetic activity, tataas yung heart rate. Or tumakbo pala yung pasyente, tapos nagpa-ECG, tataas yung heart rate. Or kinakabahan, no? something like that. So sometimes dehydrated, and so you have to hydrate. So you have to treat the cause. If it's fever, then you have to give paracetamol. Something like that. Okay. So the next um, differential diagnosis for a tachycardia algorithm, a tachycardic na rhythm with a narrow complex QRS is supraventricular tachycardia. We call it paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia because it comes in paroxysms. Ibig sabihin kasi ng paroxysm, palabas, pasulput-sulput lang siya. Parang ngayon, uh, normal yung heart rate niya, biglang mag-ASVT siya. Or uh, tachycardic na siya from the start, 110 beats per minute, meaning may normal, uh, mayroon, siya, mayroon siyang sinus tachycardia, biglang nag-SVT. So what's the difference between a sinus tachycardia from an SVT? It's the P wave. There is no P wave in SVT. So they are both narrow complex, they are both tachycardic, but sinus tachycardia has a P wave, and SVT has no P wave. Okay? The generally ganun yan. So, meron lang palaging exception to the rule. Parang if pinaalala nyo yung junctional rhythm, sinasabing wala lang, walang P-wave in junctional rhythm, pero meron pala minsan sa kabila ng QRS. In the same way, SVT um, generally has no P-wave, but sometimes there is a P-wave uh, that can be buried beneath the QRS complex. But it doesn't matter because... Uh, Pag walang QRS, o walang P wave kayong na identify initially at the emergency room, then it's um, it's safe to die to, to manage the patient as SVT. Okay, again, the difference between an SVT versus a, a sinus tachycardia is the presence of the P wave. There is PQRS in every beat. That's a sinus tachycardia. If you cannot identify a delineable P wave, then you manage 
you diagnose as sinus tach, uh, supraventricular tachycardia. Okay. So in supraventricular ventricular tachycardia, what we do is we do a carotid massage because most of the time there is increased sympathetic activity. So by doing a vagal uh, maneuver, we call it vagal maneuver, you, you do a carotid massage, you stimulate the carotid artery, and then it will somehow stimulate uh, um, the parasympathetic activity, which will inhibit sympathetic activity. So baka lang naman ma mabalik sa sinus rhythm. But if not, uh, you have to check the blood pressure of the patient. If the blood pressure is stable, you can give medications like adenosine or amiodarone. If the blood pressure is low or decreased below 100 millimeters mercury and the patient is unstable, that's the time we do cardioversion. So uh, you don't need to know the management. Uh, I mean, you don't need to memorize that or read about it if you because it will not come out in the exam. I'm just trying to show you what we do in SVT. Okay, so it is characterized by the presence of a narrow QRS complex. There is sudden onset, meaning sinus rhythm siya, biglang nag SVT, or sinus tachycardia siya, biglang nag SVT, or it can also terminate immediately, even without doing anything. Uh, minsan nga yung pasyente umubo nagbabumabalik sa sinus rhythm. So it's about 150 to 250 bits per minute. The QRS complex is the same and there are no P waves. So that's the general rule for an SVT. However, sometimes there can be a P wave, it's buried behind or beneath or within the QRS complex, or the P wave can just be prior to or, or just the QRS complex, pero sobrang liit lang siya and most of the time it will be inverted. And that's because the origin of the impulse is not coming from the SA node, it's coming from the atrial cells that's firing so fast and has conducted to the AV node into the ventricles and that's why it has carried out the, the rhythm. And so wala ka nang delineable P wave kasi hindi galing sa SA node. So this is the same example with, um, with let's say, yung sa bradycardia algorithm, let's say, a PAC, na galing sa atrial cell. So, ang PAC, once lang siya. Pero ito, pag tuloy-tuloy na yan, der diretso na yan, SVT yan. In fact, the origin of an SVT is a PAC. Parang magkakaroon ka ng PAC, tapos nagtuloy-tuloy na siya na PAC. So, ganun siya, supraventricular tachycardia. Okay? This is an example, tachycardic siya. Uh, dito sa example na to, you have like sinus rhythm, PQRST, PQRST, and then biglang tingnan nyo. Ter derecho siya. It's a narrow complex QRS, regularly occurring. Hmm, di klaro yung P wave. Sasabihin nilang meron daw P wave uh, buried in the T wave, pero parang wala naman no? Kaya nyo na sila, may mga cardio kasing masyadong meticulous uh, na identify nila yung P wave. Ako parang for me, there is no T wave. Uh, there's no P wave there. So, malalaman ko lang na may P wave buried in the T wave. If, kunwari, dito siya, nakikita ko yung morphology ng T wave, tapos nag-iba yung morphology on, on tachycardia, then baka may P wave na buried doon. Pero kung pare-parehas yung P wave, mahirap yun. So this is an SVT. This is not sinus tachycardia because there is no delineable PQRST. Uh, this is SVT because it's a narrow complex tachycardia without a P wave. Okay, so madali lang ang SVT versus sinus tachycardia because sinus tachycardia has a PQRST, SVT has no P wave. All right. Um, dapat nag atrial flutter muna tayo. I don't know what happened. Pwede bang mag-move? Anyway. Yan, dito muna tayo. Sa atrial flutter. Atrial flutter. Um, the third differential diagnosis for a regularly occurring narrow complex QRS is the atrial flutter. Uh, most students will be able to identify atrial flutter. Uh, almost all consultants, mabilis ma identifies the atrial flutter. And that's because if you look at the P wave, meron siyang tinatawag na so tooth appearance. Parang ngipin daw ng, ng shark. So, ganun siya. Ito siya. Or, parang ganito. Ito parang mahirap na siya. Parang 
Pero is ano ta rin to, atrial flutter eh. Pero mahirap kasi one, two, three, parang hindi eh. If this is, la ito ang lalabas sa exam, I think madali niyo ma-identify. So, almost all my students, if I give an exam, halos nakaka-correct sila ng atrial flutter kasi nga madali ma-identify. You have to picture the image of an atrial flutter as having a sawtooth appearance. So, the origin of the impulse here is still coming from the atrium. It just so happened na it's, uh, a bigger, uh, meron siyang route na paikot-ikot lang ang din nagkakandak to the ventricles. So, uh, ikot-ikot siya dito, ikot-ikot, ikot. So, this must have been infarcted atrial cell. So, the electrical impulse is turning there. Parang nag-fire itong atrial cell and then umikot siya doon. Then somehow it was able to conduct to the AV node. Then, paikot ikot lang siya, nagkakandak siya. So, if, it, if, it, if, if it's um, firing at a faster rate, 250 to 350, it will override the SA node. Kasi yung SA node is 60 to 100 beats per minute lang. And so, siya na palagi. Kaya kang merong, kung gaano kadami yung ikot, yung nagkakandak to the AV node, ganun yung kadami yung T wave before our QRS. So, most of the time, an atrial flutter will have an irregular will we'll have a regular rhythm. Minsan, ano siya, three is to one conduction, meaning tatlong atrial flutter, then one ventricular conduction. Minsan, it's four is to one. So you have to count if it's three is to one, four is to one, two is to one, ganon. However, there is again exemption to the rule. Sometimes an atrial flutter can have variable uh, ventricular conduction. So for example, in here, uh, one, two, three, four, five na atrial flutter ang pumasok before, before it has produced a, before it has produced a really, uh, ano, a ventricular conduction na nag-contract in ventricles. So, kaya nagkakaroon ka ng variable conduction. However, even if uh, an atrial flutter is either regular or irregular, you can still identify an atrial flutter flutter because of its sawtooth appearance. The P wave will, ha will have like, ano siya, marami siyang humps before a QRS complex. That's a flutter. This is different from atrial fibrillation because uh, delineable yung P wave. Malalaki siya, para siyang chocolate heels. Yung ventricular fibrillations kasi, uh, anong tawag namin, fibrillatory waves lang. So irregular siya, maliliit na irregular. Okay, ito, klarong-klarong may P-Wave. Kaso lang, ang dami-dami naman. So, kung titingnan mo, 1, 2, 3, 1 QRS, 1, 2, 3, 1 QRS. So, dito, parang 3 is to 1. Then, ito, 2 is to 1. Dito, 5 is to 1. So, most of the time, atrial flutter is regular. And that's why, nandun siya sa um, narrow complex regular tachycardia. Sinus tachycardia, SVT, atrial flutter, and differential diagnosis. But, Sometimes an atrial flutter can be irregular. However, it's still easy to diagnose because of a so to appearance of the P waves. Okay? So, we will now go back to the differential diagnosis of patients with narrow complex tachycardia but with irregular rhythm. There are only two multifocal atrial tachycardia and an atrial fibrillation. So, from a multifocal atrial tachycardia, from the term itself, multifocal, ibig sabihin, there are a lot of focus or there are different cells in the atrium, either right or left, that is uh, firing at a faster rate than SA node and is able to conduct to the ventricles. So, kunwari, ito siya, pumasok siya, then it, goes, it, it, it produced this, this QRS complex. Then ito, this atrial cell has... Uh, fired and then able to conduct to the ventricles and nagproduce nito. Kaya, nagkakaroon ka ng iba-ibang morphology ng P wave. So, the definition of a multifocal atrial tachycardia is a narrow complex tachycardia with irregular rhythm, but there must be three or more uh, different P waves. Kaya nga, multifocal atrial, meaning galing sa atrium. Multifocal, meaning iba-iba ang origin ng impulse and that is the reason why the P wave has a different morphology. So for example, uh, itong P wave na to, that's morphology, probably galing sa SA node to. But tingnan mo yung P wave na to, it's a little bit smaller, narrower as compared to this one. Ito, same siguro sa first beat. Uh, same pa rin sa first beat. 
this is a little bit different. Maybe same as ito. But look at this one. It's now inverted. So we have three na. And then this is tachycardic and it's irregular rhythm. Then this is multifocal atrial tachycardia. This cannot be an SVT because an SVT is regular in our complex without a T wave. This cannot be a sinus tachycardia because there is, uh, although there is a PQRS in every beat, but um, it's irregular. Okay. So for a multifocal atrial tachycardia to have a diagnosis of this multifocal atrial tachycardia, you must have three different P wave morphologies and it's an irregularly occurring narrow complex QRS. Okay? So skip tayo dyan. Ayan, sorry, meron pa pala akong maraming example ng atrial flutter. Look at that, you have to have a um, um, uh, memory of atrial flutter. Si ganyan yung mga ngipin ng mga shark and then QR. So ito, regular siya dito. So this is, um, if I have to count like three is to, sabi na natin four is to one. Kasi isasama ko to. So four is to one. Okay. Yes. So this is uh, irregular. And this is another differential diagnosis of a patient with irregular narrow complex QRS. This time, uh, hindi mo na madelineate ng maayos ang T wave. So it's irregularly occurring and that the QRS complex is narrow, but the P wave is not delineable. Hindi katulad sa multifocal atrial tachycardia na klarong klaro yung P wave, nagkakaroon ka lang ng uh, tatlong morphology. Sa atrial fibrillation, halos wala talaga. So, eto, don't be confused about this one kasi once lang naman siya, tsaka pangit naman ng morphology ng QRS. Siguro lang may nag-try na malaking atrial cell, no? I mean, a bigger impulse, kaya it produced a bigger P wave, but most of the time, walang delineable P wave. So, that's atrial fibrillation. So, if you cannot differentiate a P wave, a delineable P wave, then uh, diagnosis atrial fibrillation. So, to differentiate between a multifocal atrial tachycardia versus an atrial fibrillation, um, there must be a narrow complex QRS and both must be tachycardic and both must be irregular. But you differentiate mo lang yung dalawa because in multifocal, there are delineable P waves. Kaso nga lang nakakakita ka ng tatlong uh, different P waves. In atrial flutter, uh, atrial fibrillation halos walang P wave talaga or kung meron man, hindi siya klarong P wave. Okay, that's atrial fibrillation. So, if you ask me, on clinical practice, I would rather manage as atrial fibrillation because mas common ang atrial fibrillation and less yung multifocal atrial tachycardia. So, if you are given an exam, if you are going to answer an irregular rhythm, irregularly irregular rhythm, na narrow complex QRS, kasi hindi ka sure, gaba mas mabutin lang isag isagot mong atrial fibrillation rather than a multifocal atrial flutter uh, atrial uh, atrial ano, tachycardia so you will answer multifocal atrial tachycardia if sure ka meaning nakakita ka ng tatlong morphology ng PW pag hindi ka sure mag atrial fibrillation ka na that's a hint okay so ang atrial fibrillation there is no discernible PW it has an irregularly irregular um, rhythm and the cause is an atrial cell that has been infarcted and it's, it, is, it produced electrical impulse. And this electrical impulse nag, is naghiwahiwalay into what we call as wavelets. Parang kung among students siguro, imagine na lang merong isang firecracker tapos boom, nag-separate siya. And then that wavelets conducted to the ventricles and enough to produce a ventricular ano, conduction. So, kaya merong kang tinatawag na fibrillatory waves, mga less than one millivolts lang ng uh, movement ng atrium and then a QRS complex. Kaya tinatawag namin siyang ko, ano, atrial fibrillation. Minsan it's coarse, meaning a little bit bigger, parang ganito. Kasi may baka naman malaki-laki lang ng konti. Ito, uh, this is a P wave. I think baka nag-conduct dito yung uh, ACE node. Kasi sometimes nakakapag-conduct naman si ACE node. Parang ganito. Uh, so, but most of the time, ano siya, um, 
walang discernible P waves. We just call it either a coarse or a fine fibrillatory waves. So if we cannot diagnose as, as sinus tachycardia kahit may P wave because ano siya eh, uh, irregularly irregular. If you argue that this is a multifocal atrial tachycardia, okay lang din. If, if you can show me like three morphology of a P wave. Um, minsan nag argue mga cardiologist, uh, if it's an atrial fibrillation or a multifocal atrial tachycardia, it doesn't matter because the management will be the same. So, ang mag-differentiate na lang yan, kung alin, sino ang totoo, is during a, an electrophysiologic study. Tadalin mo yung pasyente sa cat lab, and doon makikita mo kung meron talagang um, fibrillation or different P waves. Okay. So, this is an example of a narrow complex tachycardia it's irregularly occurring. Dapat at this point in time, yung mata nyo, magaling nang mag-identify ng irregular rhythm without using a caliper, without using a band paper, mata pa lang, alam nyo nang irregular siya. So, this is wide here, and this is narrow here, so that's irregular. And uh, the P waves are just, of course, fibrillatory waves, so this is uh, an atrial fibrillation. All right? Mm. So, an atrial fibrillation can be fast. We call it controlled ventricular, uh, we call it uh, rapid ventricular response. An atrial fibrillation can sometimes be uh, between a heart rate of 6 to 100. So, we call it atrial fibrillation with controlled ventricular response. But an atrial fibrillation can also have a slow heart rate, like 50 beats per minute. So, we call it atrial fibrillation with a slow ventricular response. But in all cases, there is a narrow complex QRS and the heart, the, the rhythm is irregularly irregular and that there is no discernible P waves, okay? Most of the time, we put atrial fibrillation on a tachycardia algorithm because um, dun siya mas, it causes more of a hemodynamic compromise rather than if it's uh, in a controlled or a slow ventricular response. So this is an example of atrial fibrillation with um, slow ventricular response, sobrang hina niya the heartbeat, but it's irregularly irregular and that there is no discernible P wave. Okay. Another example of an, uh, if you look at this, this is an irregularly, irregularly irregular, irregularly irregular occurring QRS complex and it's a narrow and that there is no discernible P wave. So we will diagnose as atrial fibrillation. So kung irregularly irregular ang rhythm, again, Tas hindi kayo sure kung multifocal or atrial fibrillation. Ang isagot nyo na lang, atrial fibrillation. By 80%, correct kayo. Okay? So, we will now go to ventricle tachycardia. This is on the right side of the algorithm. Ito yung white complex tachycardia, but uh, with, a, with a... Tama, yun na yun. <laughs> white complex siya, tachycardia. So, ganyan yung itsura niya. So, here... Uh, sinus tachycardia siya, so parang meron siyang first degree AV block. No? And then biglang nagventricular tachycardia siya. Okay? So, na wide complex tachycardia is ventricular tachycardia. If um, hindi nyo na papansinin yung SPT with a barency, ito sure na kung VTAC to eh, because nar complex siya from the start. Pero kung nakita ko siyang may white complex siya before siya nag tachycardia, then I'm confident that it's SBT with apparency. But dito kasi, narrow, narrow complex QRS siya and then biglang nag tachycardia. So it becomes a white complex uh, tachycardia. We call it ventricular tachycardia. Okay? Okay. So then how you see a wide complex tachycardia. So, halos wala ng P wave, no? Because the origin of the, the impulse is coming from the ventricles. There must have been an infarct in the ventricles that has fired and able to conduct the ventricles. It has override the SA node. And kaya wala ng P wave. Puro na lang siyang QRS complex na sobrang bilis. And yan ventricular tachycardia. So most of the time, the ventricular tachycardia is regular. Hindi siya nagiging irregular because 
um, ano naman eh, yung atrial cell na infarcted is firing constantly and it has, uh, it will override the SE node. Kaya pala, kung palagi na siya, so magiging regular yung rhythm niya na white complex uh, QRS. Okay. So there are different turns in ventricular tachycardia. So we say it's a sustained pag nag white complex QRS tachycardia siya but less than 30 seconds lang and then nag convert back to sinus rhythm. So we call it non-sustained. Pag more than 30 seconds naman yung there derecho talaga yung ventricular tachycardia, we call it sustained ventricular tachycardia. Sometimes uh, we differentiate it into either monomorphic or polymorphic. Ibig sabihin, uh, pag monomorphic, same yung itsura. Ibig sabihin yan, the origin of the impulse is coming from one area only. But if it's a more polymorphic, ibig sabihin, the origin of the impulse is nag-change. Maraming infarcted cells na um, mabibilis, faster than the firing rate of the SE node. So it has override the SE node. So itong area muna, and then the other a ventricular cell now fired at a faster rate, faster than the first ventricular infarcted cell. So, siya naman ang mag override ng impulse, and that's why nagchi change yung morphology. So, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. In this example, magiging irregular na yung rhythm niya, kasi magkaiba iba yung origin ng infarcted cell. So, if you see a uh, monomorphic versus a polymorphic, malalaman mo mas somehow, parehas naman sila toxic, pero mas pangit si polymorphic kasi maraming infarcted cell. The third point is different and it might be difficult at your stage as first year. Uh, this is uh, parang lumiliit na lumalaki. Para siyang polymorphic, pero ano siya, uh, para siyang uh, umiikot na lumiliit and then lumalaki. So, this is another form of ventricular tachycardia. But the problem here is... Uh, uh, iba naman yung, yung cost ng, ng origin ng impulse niya. So, I will not give you an example, uh, a question, an example about their study point because it's um, difficult at your stage. So, uh, ventricular tachycardia lang, you don't need to answer monomorphic, polymorphic, sustained, or non-sustained. Ventricular tachycardia in an exam is already enough to me. So, as long as it's a wide complex QRS tachycardia, then you diagnose as ventricular tachycardia, not SVT with aberrancy. Parang irregularly irregular, narrow complex, ang isasagot, isasagot yung atrial fibrillation rather than multifocal atrial tachycardia, most likely you will be correct. Okay. So, oh wait. Um, ah, yes, yes. So this time, there are just like fibrillatory waves. Ito yung uh, opposite kay atrial fibrillation. Because in atrial fibrillation, the origin of the impulse is coming from an infarcted atrial cell. But here, it's an infarcted ventricular cell that has produced um, an electrical impulse. And the difference ng ventricular fibrillation to a ventricular tachycardia is in ventricular tachycardia, medyo malaki yung the electrical impulse has produced an organized ventricular contraction na one beat. Ito, in ventricular fibrillation, Kasi maliliit lang yung impulse is not enough to cause the entire ventricular muscle to contract. Parang anterior wall lang, and then next is lateral wall, then next inferior wall. Not, habang nag-contract si anterior wall, the rest of the ventricular walls are in a relaxed state. And so, yung nag-contract lang eight, uh, eight, uh, anterior wall, in, it will not be enough to eject enough stroke volume. So, Talagang uh, tawag namin yan is ano siya, deadly. It, the patient will die because there is no enough stroke volume produced. So, so ventricular fibrillation siya. So um, malalaman mo siya because it's irregularly irregular. And then there is hindi siya minsan narrow, minsan wide. Pero sobrang uh, chaotic yung impulse niya, that's ventricular fibrillation. Unlike ventricular, ventricular tachycardia, it's an organized QRS complex na malalaki and then talagang ma-appreciate ma, ma mo that there is a QRS complex. Ito, halos um, pangit na, it's chaotic uh, ventricular contraction. So, can be coarse, but it can be fine. 
However, there is no P wave, there is no true QRS complex and the, the rhythm is uh, no, irregularly irregular. That's ventricular fibrillation, okay? So what you do in a ventricular fibrillation is you have to defibrillate the patient, meaning to say, kailangan mong kunin yung defibrillator and then you shock the patient at 200 joules. Ang gusto mong mangyari is you just want to shock all the ventricles and then para mag-relax sila lahat and then merong isang somehow a pacemaker that would um, initiate an electrical impulse and be able to conduct to the ventricles. Yun yung dasal mo. That's the purpose of doing a ventricular uh, de a defibrillation. So you want to um, electrically stimulate all the muscles para lahat sila relax sabay-sabay. Kasi sa ventricular fibrillation, hindi nagsasabay-sabay. Yung iba contracted, yung iba relax. Kaya hindi ka nakakaproduce ng in order to produce a, a good stroke volume, dapat sabay-sabay lahat mag-contract, mag-inject ng blood. Pero in ventricular fibrillation, ano shield, ano sila? Uh, hindi sila sabay-sabay. So you want to electrocute the ventricles para relax lahat and then merong isang mag-conduct ng impulse and then be able to cause a, a good ventricular contraction. Okay, so we have, uh, we are done with tachycardia algorithm. If it's fast, meaning heart rate more than 100 beats per minute, and there is a wide complex QRS, ang sagot nyo is, isa lang, ventricular tachycardia. Now, it's narrow, you have to look at the R to R interval if it's either regular or irregular. If it's uh, irregular, uh, if it's regular and there's a P wave, um, sagot nyo is sinus tachycardia. If there is no P wave, is PT. Ang hirap naman kasi ni atrial flutter kung saan natin siya ilalagay, no? Kasi sa atrial flutter, uh, hindi ko siya minsan sinasama because hindi mo na kailangan ng ibang algorithm for atrial flutter. Makikita mo talaga siyang ano, uh, uh, klaro na atrial flutter siya. Madali lang siya ma-diagnose. Now, if, if it's an irregularly irregular and that there is a P wave with three different morphologies, that's a MAT or multifocal atrial tachycardia. And if there is no P wave, that's an atrial fibrillation. So if it's a flutter waves, kasi sometimes uh, regular siya, sometimes irregular siya, that's atrial flutter. But most of the time, an atrial flutter is regular. Okay? Yay! Uh, my question before we go to review. Do you have any question? Doc